Have you ever found yourself lying awake at night, not out of guilt or shame, but simply wondering, is this still okay? That quiet question, whispered internally by so many men over 60, deserves more than silence. It deserves science. It deserves compassion. And most importantly, it deserves an answer grounded in medical truth, not myth. You are far from alone. Thousands of men carry this unspoken curiosity, not because they're broken, not because they failed, but because no one ever gave them permission to ask. We talk freely about cholesterol, blood pressure, even testosterone replacement. But when it comes to natural self-stimulation, suddenly the room goes quiet, awkward, confused. So let's change that, right here, right now. What actually happens to your prostate if you engage in daily ejaculation after age 60? Is it silently harming you, as some outdated warnings suggest? Or could it, in fact, be quietly protecting you? and no one ever explained why. Let me walk you through this as your physician would, calmly, clearly, without judgment, only evidence. For generations, men have been handed contradictory messages about self-pleasure. Some traditions warned it drains vitality. Others claimed it invites disease, inflammation, infection, even cancer. But here's what modern medicine reveals. Those fears were never rooted in biology. They were born from cultural anxiety. And when fear masquerades as fact, men stop listening to their bodies. And sometimes they stop doing what's actually beneficial. The good news? We now have decades of rigorous clinical data, not opinion, not anecdote, to guide us. And what that data shows may surprise you, or perhaps finally reassure you. Let's begin with one of the most comprehensive studies ever conducted on this very topic. In 2016, researchers from Harvard Medical School published findings in JAMA Oncology, one of the most respected journals in clinical medicine. They tracked over 31,900 men, many well into their 60s and beyond, across an 18-year period. The results? Striking. Men who reported ejaculating 21 or more times per month, roughly every other day, demonstrated a 33% lower risk of developing prostate cancer compared to those who ejaculated only four to seven times monthly. Let that sink in. This wasn't a small survey. This was a longitudinal, peer-reviewed, multivariate analysis, controlling for age, BMI, smoking status, physical activity, diet, alcohol use, and family history. No agenda, no product to sell, just raw, statistically significant observation. Higher frequency of ejaculation correlated with reduced cancer incidence. So, why? What biological mechanism could possibly explain this protective effect? Let's explore three scientifically supported pathways, the kind your urologist would explain if given enough time. First, clearance of prostatic fluid. Your prostate isn't just a passive gland. It's a dynamic organ that continuously produces seminal fluid, rich in enzymes, zinc, citrate, and proteins. When ejaculation doesn't occur regularly, these secretions can stagnate. Think of it like plumbing. When fluid sits unmoving, biochemical debris accumulates. Over time, this creates oxidative stress, damaging free radicals build up, triggering low-grade inflammation within the glandular tissue itself. A 2020 review in Nature Reviews Urology confirmed that chronic intraprostatic fluid retention is associated with elevated markers of inflammation, including interleukin-6 and tumor necrosis factor alpha, both implicated in carcinogenesis. Regular release? It acts like a gentle flush, clearing metabolic waste, reducing oxidative burden, maintaining cellular homeostasis. Simple, biological, essential, Second, modulation of stress physiology. Ejaculation, particularly when experienced in a relaxed, non-compulsive context, triggers a cascade of neuroendocrine responses. Dopamine surges, oxytocin releases, cortisol, our primary stress hormone, drops significantly post-orgasm, as shown in multiple psychoneuroendocrinology studies, including a 2022 paper in psychoneuroendocrinology. Why does this matter after 60? 
because aging amplifies the impact of cortisol. Chronically elevated levels don't just make you feel tense, they promote systemic inflammation, impair immune surveillance, disrupt insulin sensitivity, and contribute to visceral fat accumulation, all known risk factors for prostate pathology, including benign prostatic hyperplasia, BPH, and cancer progression. In short, healthy sexual release isn't just pleasure. It's a physiological reset button for your stress axis, especially critical in midlife and beyond. Third, preservation of pelvic vascular and neural integrity. Just as your heart needs exercise to stay strong, your pelvic floor and reproductive organs thrive on regular, gentle activation. Ejaculation stimulates rhythmic contraction of the bulbospongiosis and ischiocavernosus muscles, enhancing microcirculation to the prostate, urethra, and surrounding tissues. As we age, endothelial function declines, blood flow slows, nerve signaling weakens. Without periodic stimulation, tissues become hypoxic, fibrotic, less responsive. A 2023 study in the Journal of Sexual Medicine demonstrated that men who maintained regular sexual activity, partnered or solo, preserved significantly better pelvic perfusion and nerve conduction velocity than sedentary peers. Again, this isn't about performance, it's about maintenance, about keeping the machinery lubricated, oxygenated, alive. But, and this is crucial, frequency alone is not the whole story. Context matters, quality matters, intention matters. The same Harvard cohort revealed something else. Men with higher ejaculation frequency also tended to sleep better, move more, eat cleaner, and report lower psychological distress. Ejaculation wasn't operating in isolation. It was embedded within a lifestyle of holistic wellness. So yes, you can overdo it. Not because your prostate wears out, but because compulsion distorts biology. If you're engaging out of anxiety, boredom, or emotional avoidance, your body will signal imbalance, fatigue, irritability, emotional flatness, poor recovery. These aren't signs of sin, they're signs of dysregulation. True health emerges when release is integrated, calm, intentional, restorative. Not mechanical, not obsessive, just natural. And if you're over 65, this applies even more. Aging doesn't erase biology. It demands greater respect for it. Your prostate still produces fluid. Your nerves still need stimulation. Your circulation still benefits from pulsatile activity. The difference? Pace, gentleness, mindfulness, less urgency, more presence. But, and I must emphasize this, ejaculation is one tool, not a magic bullet. Prostate health is a symphony, and every instrument must play its part. Let's talk about the full orchestra. Nutrition. Your plate shapes your prostate as powerfully as any pill. Lycopene. The crimson antioxidant in tomatoes, watermelon, guava, has been repeatedly shown to accumulate in prostate tissue, quenching free radicals and down-regulating oncogenic pathways. A landmark study in cancer epidemiology biomarkers and prevention found men consuming greater than or equal to 10 milligrams lycopene daily, about half cup tomato paste, had 25% lower risk of aggressive prostate cancer. Add cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, rich in sulforaphane, which enhances phase two detoxification of estrogen metabolites. Omega-3s from fatty fish suppress COX2 inflammatory enzymes. Green Tea's EGCG modulates NFKB signaling, a master switch for inflammation. Food isn't fuel, it's information, and your prostate is listening. Movement. Sitting is the new smoking, especially for pelvic health. Prolonged sedentarism compresses iliac vessels, reduces lymphatic drainage, and promotes venous pooling around the prostate. Just 30 minutes of daily walking improves pelvic perfusion by 18% per a 2021 European urology trial. Add Kegel exercises, yes for men, contracting and releasing the pubococcygeus muscle. 
Three sets of 10 holds daily can improve urinary flow, reduce nocturia, and enhance erectile quality within eight weeks. Sleep. Testosterone isn't made in a lab. It's synthesized during deep REM cycles. Men sleeping six hours per night show 15 to 20% lower total testosterone. And low T correlates with increased aromatase activity, converting testosterone to estrogen, which fuels prostate cell proliferation. Prioritize sleep hygiene. Cool, dark room. No screens after 8 p.m. Magnesium glycinate or tart cherry extract if needed. Protect your nights. Your prostate depends on them. Inflammation control. Chronic prostatitis isn't always bacterial. Often it's sterile, driven by metabolic endotoxemia from poor diet, visceral fat, or chronic stress. A 2023 meta-analysis in translational andrology and urology showed anti-inflammatory protocols, Mediterranean diet, omega-3 supplementation, mindfulness, reduced NIH CPSI symptom scores by 40%, often outperforming antibiotics. Mental emotional health. Shame is a toxin. Carrying guilt around natural biological release elevates cortisol, suppresses oxytocin, and activates the amygdala, creating a neurochemical environment hostile to healing. You are not deviant. You are not regressing. You are responding to a physiological rhythm older than civilization itself. Release the shame, and you release a barrier to your own wellness. Now, what if you live with comorbidities, hypertension, diabetes, BPH, post-surgical recovery? In nearly all cases, moderate mindful self-stimulation remains safe and often beneficial. No credible study links it to cardiovascular events, glycemic instability, or surgical complications. In fact, improved parasympathetic tone post-ejaculation may lower blood pressure temporarily, a welcome effect for hypertensive patients. That said, if you're on alpha blockers, 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, or anticoagulants, or recovering from TURP or laser ablation, consult your urologist. Individualize. Always. Let's summarize. Clinically, compassionately. Daily ejaculation after 60 is not a relic of youth. It is not indulgence. It is not weakness. It is biology. When practiced with awareness, not compulsion, it supports detoxification, reduces inflammation, preserves vascular health, balances hormones, and may meaningfully lower long-term cancer risk. But, and this is the cornerstone, it must exist within a larger framework. Nourishing food, daily movement, restorative sleep, emotional resilience, and medical partnership. Prostate health is not a single act. It is a daily practice a ritual of respect for the body that has carried you this far. If this resonated, if it lifted a weight you didn't know you were carrying, then you're ready for the next step. I invite you to watch our companion guide. Number one exercise that allows your penile arteries to open and the blood to flow freely. As you all know, erection is all about the blood flow. No gimmicks, no hype. Just one exercise is all you need to fix your erection quality you can do in your own home to fortify your prostate, reclaim your vitality, and age not just longer, but better. You've honored your body enough to seek truth. Now, let's build on it. Click below. Your future self will thank you.